Hello, ladies and gentlemen, is your host with the most Avery LR32 here, bringing you guys, finally, finally, we got the damn ban list, baby. Only 10 days after Konami promised us. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows because they say now that the next update will be in, quote, a few months. Konami, why did you change your date? This did not need to happen. Now, I'm thinking that this might be because of COVID and cancellations and things, but few months is so generic that this has me worried. This has me worried. I'm going to make another video about this and probably tomorrow or later today, but this really has me scared shitless. So let's just go ahead and dive right into this. We got so many changes on this list. Arch Nemesis Protos is banned and Eva is also banned. Uh, uh, what? So first of all, was Drytron really that much of an issue that they had to ban Eva outright? Arch Nemesis Protos, I get. It's a more broken. It's a power corrupt version of Drive Infecting Virus, if we're being honest with ourselves. Like, holy shit, that is insane. So, uh, Drytron, Drytron might be dead. They've got Ben Tenet 1 and no Eva. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't think that this deck is really going to survive. Also banned, we got Cymorg Bird of Sovereignty. So, look, Cymorg in a nutshell is not that broken of a card, but the fact that Tri-Brigade could abuse this to drop out Cymorg to then drop out the Barrier Statue uh, of the Stormwinds is just insane. Um, now they'll have to either hard bring out the statue with like a, an additional summon card, something like that. They can't just cheese it out. So this was a very good hit on Konami's part. Now, also, Imperial Order is banned again. This card, holy shit. It, when it is broken, it is busted. You know, there were at times when it was unbanned with the errata that it wasn't that big of an issue. But when it was an issue, it was so fucking killer. 700 life points, even during both players' standby phases, is not that big of a deal. Like, you can easily survive that and then some and beat the opponent. Uh, before you like run too low on life points. Uh, it is insane. Now, that's it for the ban. So Mystic Mind was not banned. Mystic Mind was not hit on this list, ladies and gentlemen. They brought back Astrograph Sorcerer, Destrudo, Fairy Tail Snow, and Luna Light Tiger. Wh what? Like, what? Wh where's all this coming from, boys? <laughs> so Astrograph, I look, Electromite is banned, and... Uh, pendulums are getting that new, I think it's like a Link 2 Pendulum Link monster that it, it seems to be replacing Electromite. I think bringing back Astrograph is just going to be able to help Pendulums. I'm really excited to see what Pendulum players are going to be able to do with Astrograph. This is very interesting. Destrudo, I, I'm a bit worried on because remember, we still have Halky Fibrax. Um, Destrudo being around, I, I don't know. I, I think that there's going to be a lot of baby back bullshit shenanigans with that one. Fairy Tale Snow, I mean, they they want to help Grand Maju, I guess. Like that's that's cool. Don't get me wrong. Like you can't can't really abuse it as bad at one copy. I feel so. I think that that's pretty cool. Luna Light Tiger, it doesn't have an errata, and from what I remember, it's it's not a hard once per turn. So, uh, I guess I mean like that's that's cool. Um, Recital Starling at 1, this needed to happen. Uh, some people were saying hit Zeus, some people were saying hit Recital Starling. I think the fact that Recital Starling is just so reusable just needed to be hit at 1. It's a hit to Tri Brigade that kind of puts them in check. Um, so yeah, that, I think that needed to happen. Um, and then we have Monster Gate, and then we also have Pot of Desires. So, who would have thought that a card like Pot of Desires, that's a hard once per turn, makes you pay a quarter of your deck to draw two cards? This goes to show that players will do anything to get free draws. Because when you look at Desires in a nutshell, yes, the card is on paper not that good. Paying 10 cards and risking it for the biscuit to lose 10 potential combo pieces or combo starters to draw two free cards doesn't seem that good. But when you look at it from that competitive mindset and you realize you probably weren't going to draw those 10 cards anyway because you were going to be dead before then to get two free resources that could potentially win you the game in a couple turns. That's that's all free value. It's free value, especially in like a 60-card Grimmaju deck. Like, you don't care about your shit being banished. As long as you don't banish all your Grimmajus, you're good to go, pimp. Um, Monster Gate, I mean, what what is this really going to be abused in? It was good because of like 60-card lawn mowing decks. And like lawn mowing is still banned. So to have this around, like... 
if I, if I remember correctly, like reasoning is still at one. It's like one reasoning, one monster gate. Like, cool. Um, I, I don't really see anything happening with that. And then to two and to three. So we've got a hero lives, fusion destiny, the dear servant, Salaman Great Circle, and scapegoat. And then at three, we've got Nessie, Joker, Darkness Metal, E Telly, Rygeki, and Skill Drain. Who would have thought we would be in a format with three Rygeki, and then they finally brought back three Skill Drain? If you watched my banlist discussion video from a couple weeks ago, I talked about bringing Skill Drain back to three. Because Skill Drain, I feel, is just such a necessary evil in the game of Yu Gi Oh! And really, if you have an established board and you're using Skill Drain to stop their monsters, it's not going to break their board. Like, Mystic Mind is arguably more broken than Skill Drain. Mystic Mind's even more fucking broken now that Imperial Order is not around. Expect a lot of Mystic Mind decks to be cropping up now because this list is bananas for Mystic Mind. Nessie went from 2 to 3, sure. Joker 2 to 3, sure. Red MD, it's a hard once per turn. Who gives a shit? E Telly from 2 to 3, sure. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter. But the fact that they brought Raigeki from ban to 1 for forever, and now to 3, and Skill Drain, a floodgate from 1 to 3, is amazing. I love Skill Drain. It is fantastic. You know, the OCG has had Skill Drain at 3 for years, and it's so nice to be able to see this amazing classic floodgate back. Thank you, Konami. Um, a Hero Lives has been at 1 for a long time. It's another combo starter for heroes. I'm, I'm curious to see what this does at 2. They got a bit of a consistency hit with Fusion Destiny at 2. Nadir Servant, same thing. It's a consistency hit. Circle to 2 is going to be a help to Salad. Scapegoat to 2, I'm a bit worried about, but I feel like it's just not going to be as abusable at 3. Um, but there are, as cool as this list is, there are still issues with this list, right? Um, as much as they hurt decks and, and helped others... Keep in mind, Anaconda is not banned. Um, Dragoons is not banned. Phoenix Enforcer, it, it wasn't going to get banned. Um, you know, they only banned Protoss, Eva, and Cymorg in Imperial Order. Um, so the question now becomes, Vert Anacondas, how high are they going to shoot to the moon? And... Uh, you know, what, what's what's going to happen with this format? Because it's still going to be Anaconda, Dragoons, and DPEs everywhere. Um, and the fact that we don't know anymore when we can specifically hold out for a new list. This really has me worried. I'm cautiously optimistic. But now that we don't know a specific date, we're just going to have to assume that within four months we should start, you know, tightening up our wallets and, and holes, as Review Tech USA says, to get a balance. Because this few months thing... People are going to be fucking pissed. Guys, let me know what you think about this incredible sweep of changes of a ban list. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.